Yeah, it's always nice to start with the most basic stuff, like right? the feet. <laughs> but you know, fiddlers get kind of wound up about things. And, and there's some Colchester. She told me, I said, what should I say about you? She said, I've been step dancing forever. <laughs> well, that's, that's her story. I am Franklin Haven, this is Janice Carr, and we've been right here for almost forever. So we're going to play one little set of uh, Bill Scott's March, and then a couple of French tunes just to get us in the right venue, shape, story, region, or whatever. Uh, the march is called, uh, it's for Doreen and Peter Chase. And the first reel is uh, Super Poche. They call it Quebec, the uh, Woodchoppers reel. And then uh, another one called Lazy Boudma. Lazy Boudma is the name of the town up there. So it's just a nice little dance. Always makes me play it, and I like to play it, so I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. A little mark first.
St. Albans, or mm. Dunbarty, Roger Crow, who is a long time veteran. He's been playing, I think, here in the show since it began, and he is, among other things, the chairman of the board of directors of the Northeast Bank, who started the whole thing. So, here. Yep, all set.
was a, uh, uh, he was here every year on this stage, and uh, he was quite the Vermont fiddler. Uh, he was very unassuming, didn't brag much, but he played the nice music. And not only that, but he played some good tunes. He wrote a few tunes, too. We found out after his death that he had some 41 tunes that he had written. Nobody knew, most of us didn't know that. So the Northeast Fiddle Association, which I'm a member, uh, we decided to uh, put a book together, and so we did. And uh, I'd like to play a couple of these tunes for you tonight. Uh, we'll start out with Hills of Vermont. We had to go into the Friday night gig, and then the Northeast Fiddlers Waltz, which he wrote for the Northeast Fiddlers.
Depois está com moeda, acabou, pedindo. Olha lá, os pontos de pão, os pontos de pão. Ah, something gold, indeed. And then we're going to try to go into the opinion of the line. several years ago, and uh, we're going to play two things. One, two.
Janice, Janice is one of our people, one of the like. She will play with anyone, even if she didn't practice with them. She, uh, she, what's this thing? It's fine. Well, thank you very much, Roger and Janice, and... Uh, you, may, you may have noticed that Roger was every now and again asking me if he had, could play another tune or two, and that's because well, because Roger is very conscientious and he pays attention. That in the past, well, what should I say? We're all wonderful people, but some people did not pay attention and if you just let them go, they would play here until the cows came home. And <laughs> so the show would last till about 12 midnight, which is fine if you're a fiddler, if you have whatever genetic defect we had, which allows us to listen to this stuff forever actually be able to tell the difference between the tunes. One night I was listening to a folklore show and the lady on the show who was a Scottish folklore expert came on and she said, well, I can't do a Scottish accent, but she said, it's very well known that in all of Irish and Scots fiddling there's only seven different ideas. And I thought to myself, well, that's six and a half more than I can use and keep it in my mind at any given time. But because, you know, for the ordinary everyday person, sometimes it sounds like this is all just running together, fiddle tune after fiddle tune. We, we like to have people who do something different. And my next guest, old friend of mine, Tim Jennings, is, is here to do something a little different. He lives now in North Montpelier. He used to live in Jeffersonville, and I got to know him, and he was a storyteller back in the days when, you know, before they had storytelling all over the place, you know. He, he would tell these stories and occasionally he would hire me and another friend of mine to be his straight man. And uh, put on a great show. So, in order to kind of break up the monotony of too many fiddles, I asked him to come on and just do whatever he wanted to do for the regulation 15 minutes. This is Mr. Tim Jennings. I see there are some kids here. Uh, kids, you can either call me Mr. Jennings or Tim, whichever you like better, whichever you're more comfortable with. And when I say three, I would like everybody in this auditorium, children and role models alike, to tell me what your names are, all together, at the same time, simultaneously, as loudly as you possibly can. <laughs> Are you going to do this? <laughs> Try that again. Are you going to do this? Yes! Are you going to do this? Yes! One, two, three! Yes! Please meet you. <laughs> and of course I remember you. Well, now I've been all around the world, you know, I've been from the attic to the cellar, I've been from the back porch to the barn, I've been out the front door, I got halfway to the gate, old man said it was time for that lap round round speak me, huh? So, I went and I shucked and I shelled the pigs a bucket of slops, but when I got there, why, the pumpkins was all in the pig patch, I had to pick up a pig and ha! out of there. I let the old gray mare down the kitchen book. I threw the saddle across the barn. I stuck my thumbs in the stirrups. I reached down, leaped into the straddle, while both feet down one side, uh, knocked on the woman, and a duel come out. <laughs> Asked her for a crust of light beer. Asked her for a glass of dark bread. Oh, no thank you, ma'am. I don't care if it's all why. I just had any. Er, uh, Bark came out and dog had me. <laughs> so I thought I'd go see my gal Sal. Easy to find her place. It was a plain brick house built out of logs, standing all by itself in the middle of 44 others just like it. And she was glad to see me too. She had the windows nailed down. She had the door nailed up. I come on in. I threw my hat on the fire. I stirred up the bed. I said, Huh? Here I am. 
<laughs> and we sat down real close. I was real close to that corner. She was real close to that corner. <laughs> we talked about love and politics <laughs> and dog ticks and facial ticks and card tricks. We played cards. I drew a heart, she drew a diamond. Her old man came in, he drew a club. <laughs> I said, honey, here I go. I don't keep you back no more while well, I keep the gray in there. So Pop went first, then me, then all the dogs, except for old Shorty, he came too. Right about then, dogs all trailed, except for old Shorty, he trailed too. Right about then, dogs all treed, except for old Shorty, he treed too. I come up the little sick of bucket more tree. There I was, out in that hickory limb. I was sitting on the pine knot, and I shook that limb. Whoa. And I shook that Whoa. Right about then, something fell. I looked around. It was me. <laughs> Every last one of them dogs jumped on me, except for old Shorty. He jumped too. I picked him up by the tail, cut it off up close behind the ears. And when we got back from that last round, we had two black eyes, three broken bones, partially full case of viral pneumonia, and all the dogs, except for old Shorty. And that's the end of that one right there. <laughs> now that's an old folk story. It goes back, way back to the Middle Ages. Pops up from time to time. Got written down around 1600 somewhere in England, and then it popped up uh, certainly in the southern mountains uh, about 75 years ago. Got written down. I heard it at a folk festival. Uh, I loved it. I took it home. Uh, found out. You know, found that book. Learned out of the book. Tried to put it out on my friends. And my friends did this. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end they said, all right. They can tell it's a while ago that I learned this. But I did get it finally, and the one about the time I got it was uh, I remembered that there was a piece I'd learned when I was in high school, also traditional folk, which is to say no one person made it up. And it travels not by print, ideally, but by hearing it. I'm going to teach you that one right now. And I'm going to teach it to you the same way I learned it back in high school, which is I'm going to say it once, and then you're going to say it with me. Okay? <laughs> you're pretty good. Okay? okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let's all go bowling on bowling green, on bowling green, on bowling green. <laughs> All go bowling on bowling green at five o'clock in the morning. But we can't go bowling on bowling green. Why can't we go bowling on bowling green? Because bowling green belongs to the king. Who's the king? <laughs> Husband of the queen. Who's the queen? Mother of the Prince. Put Prince, hand Prince, finger Prince, here Prince. <laughs> and the moral of this story is never confuse passion. Ah. Ah. With asthma. Uh. <laughs> Or asthmatic passion uh, 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 with passionate asthma. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Let's all go bowling on bowling green, on bowling green, on bowling green. Let's all go bowling on bowling green, five o'clock in the morning. But we can't go for bowling on Bowling Green. <coughs> bowling Green. Because Bowling Green belongs to the king. Who's the king? <laughs>
Husband of the Queen. Who's the Queen? Mother of the Skillet liquors back in the places. <laughs> and there's a part for you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. Try that. I'm getting ready to go. A little louder than that. I'm getting ready to go. That's great. And it'll build. And then there is a chorus also. And you don't have to sing the whole chorus, but at least come in on the howls. What? The howls. <laughs> Uh, maybe this is the Give me a second now. I think it's. I'm getting ready to. Ah! Ah! dream. That's a D. I had a dream the other day. I'm getting ready to go. Oh, let's try that again. Devil, he come for to take me away. I'm getting ready to go. Always heard that the place was hot. Ask him if it was or not, and he wouldn't say yes or no or what. I'm getting ready to go. Sweet home, what we in heaven. Sweet home, here in the morning alone. Thank you. 
I fell down on my sinful knees. I got no religion and the dogs got fleas. I can't wait to go. kids ears and a few other things and before you know it we were in business. Anyway, I believe Cecile Brown. Uh, okay. Oh here she comes. Cecile Brown who's working herself down to the you know putting this festival on and we should all give her a hand. So it's 
yet. You know, I don't do any bad news. People call me up and say, Franklin, why didn't you call us up yet? The show is about to start. Said, oh yeah, right. So you're going to be there? Yes. That's about the size of it. <laughs> I used to tell people, I said, you know, it's a little like when you let the cows in the barn. You know, they all go. They all know which stall to go to. They don't have to really do anything. <laughs> of course, nowadays cows are. They don't go in stalls anymore anyway. Just so. Anyways, it's always a pleasure to do this, and it's a lot of fun. And I really appreciate the Maple Festival and the Medical Center and the Northeast Fiddlers giving her that money because everybody knows if you're a parent or even if you're not that music lessons and all this stuff costs a lot of money. And uh, so they appreciate that, I'm sure. Now, next on the show is going to be uh, Michelle Chouinier and her daughter Isabella. And they, of course, this is daughter and granddaughter of Faith Chouinier, and uh, he was part of the show for years and years and years, and you can't imagine the show without him, and Michelle has continued on with her daughter, who's learning how to step dance and play the fiddle, and they are going to take it away now. Michelle and Isabella, Isabella Rotner, and Michelle Schoenier, St. Albans. Bonsoir. Bonsoir tout le monde. Bonsoir. Comment ça va? <laughs> We're very happy to be here again this year. This time Isabella is going to take over the show. Uh, she was very lucky last year to receive the Fiddler Scholarship and has since taken lessons with uh, Pete Sutherland uh, in here, in, uh, well actually in Burlington, and also Don Roy from Maine, and she's going to share with you some of those tunes. We're going to start off with Ré de Gaspé and Tout à coup tu maries ma fille, which is a tune that my father used to play on harmonica. Thank you. 
Bartons. <laughs> Don Roy, who is from Gordon, Maine, and uh, she's been taking fiddle lessons with him through FaceTime. Do you know what FaceTime is? It's on the computer. And so every week uh, she takes a lesson and it's uh, like coming in from Maine on the computer. And uh, she's been learning a lot of his tunes that way. He's a Franco-American fiddler. Uh, and um, he's a has a great repertoire of old tunes. After that tune, we're going to move into Timmy Clifford's Jake, which is a tune she learned from her fiddle teacher in Vermont, from Pete Sutherland. So we're going to give you a variety of two different kinds of tunes.
chanson en français. And they sing a song for you in French. Uh, this is a song that Martha Peller used to sing. She was a well-known Franco-American uh, singer and uh, folklore uh, um, and activist, and uh, fortunately passed away at the age of 37 years old, about 20 years ago. There's going to be a concert in her memory um, this coming uh, weekend, next Sunday, uh, not tomorrow, but the Sunday after, at the Contours Auditorium in Burlington. And uh, many people from Quebec and Vermont will be there to celebrate her memory. And this is a song I learned from her, Rama Ramadan. And imagine uh, rowing in a boat, trying to find a peaceful place in the world. to my father always loved to play at the Maple Festival, Turkey in the Straw. Isabella 
do an Irish treble jig, uh, Irish treble step dance. And we're going to invite Frank here to play an Irish tune for us. A little harmonica. Turkey in the stove. Yeah, yeah. They've always said that. Turkey in the stove. That tiny little harmonica. He put it in his mouth. We couldn't figure out whether he was playing on his dentures or something. But anyway. You want to give a little introduction? Play some tunes. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. We're so happy to be here. Good to see you. Well, listen, we're going to put a couple of tunes together first off. The first one's called Merryweather, and the second one is a, is, a, is a contemporary tune called Lost Everything. Hi, you two. Hey, great hey, set, hey. Tim. Yeah, hey. <laughs> All right.
How about a little song? This is kind of fun. It's called Down the River I Go Uncle Joe. And sing this with us if you'd like. It'd be so cool to hear your voices on this. I have to figure out a way that we can play a song like this and then have all you sing back to us just like Tim did. <laughs> you can sing your names all at once to us. She grew up in southern Vermont near Manchester, and, and, uh, but I'm, I'm a West Coast kid. I grew up and born in Oregon and grew up in California. However, I never ever in my life felt at home until I moved to Vermont. I moved to the Northeast Kingdom in 1987 and settled in Westfield and had a little bakery in Newport, and those were important years for me. And we moved away, we moved to North Carolina, but we came back. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the day we met, Sue was living in California, and I was living in North Carolina, and it was like the very first conversation we ever had, it was, well, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? You know, what, what do you want to do? Said, well, 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 Dana said, all I want to do is sit on my porch in Vermont and play the fiddle. And I said, me too! <laughs> That's all I want to do. And it was uh, history from there. So we didn't really know where we, we were going to settle, and we, we found ourselves in, in, in looking at a place in Cabot, and... And we loved the house, and so we bought it, and we think, okay, we, we hope this is a nice town. <laughs> hope it is. Uh, we knew it was. And just across the field, we met Cameron Hoffman, who you met earlier this evening, and, and uh, she became a student, which was really wonderful to have. She, could, she walks across the, the field, the hay field, with, with her fiddle, and no knocks on the back door. Oh, it's time for the lesson. It's great. Another thing we're very fortunate is that, you know, Cabot's is a small little village, right? But what it has is it has Harry's Hardware. And Harry's Hardware, uh, after Lowe's and Home Depot and all that came in, wasn't doing so well. 
and it was just getting by month to month and the place closed and then it was bought at auction and reopened just to keep the pet gas pump going, you know. And happily, a couple of years ago, a young couple moved to town and they said, you know what this hardware store needs? And they're looking at that long counter there, the long wooden counter that says, this place needs a couple beer taps. <laughs> Now, our town could not support a hardware store, really, and it could not support a pub, but a hardware store and pub, <laughs> yeah. Get so, a pint of beer, walk down the aisles, and pick up your... <laughs> so it's great. It's become a little music scene, uh, um, hardware scene, pub scene, a social scene. And uh, invariably, you know, you go to the hardware store to get something that you need for hardware, but you end up staying a little bit longer, you know, you need somebody and then oh well let's catch up and then share a beer or whatever they've got and uh and they they, they the, the owners came up with this great idea they put some some screws and washers and nuts and bolts or whatever they had in there into this little brown bag and they call it an alibi bag <laughs> so if you've been at the hardware store a little over long you just pick up yourself an alibi bag and you're good to go so they sell them for a buck at the cash at the cash register <laughs> so soon i just made this this new uh this new recording this new cd and, and i wrote a fiddle tune for it and it's a rag and so we call this the alibi bag rag <laughs> come to campus sometime we have old time jam sessions on sunday afternoons lots of yeah, you'll see franklin there you'll see franklin there you'll see me and you'll Sue see there, there sometimes yeah <laughs> Here you go, Alibi Bagrag. This is a, a fiddle-centric sort of event that we would bring a banjo to it. Banjos are all right here, right, Franklin? Are they, are they okay? He says, he says, yeah, as he's looking at his watch. <laughs> oh, he says, oh, it's time for a banjo. Nice. Well, this was a. Uh, this, this tune we're going to play for you, uh, I learned from listening to Tommy Jarrell, who came from North Carolina. And it's great, too. You can sing along with us as well. Actually, say, darling, say. Sing along. Say, darling, say. One more time. Say, darling, say. 
<laughs> Y'all should be up here singing. Anyway, this is the fun little tune called Say Darn and Say. and the entrances and the plaque um, about how this place was built. And um, it's just, I mean, you should be proud of this building, all you St. Alban, what do you call St. Alban's people? St. Alban's people. What do you call people from St. Alban's? St. Albanians? St. Albans. I like the sound of that. Well, we should be proud of this place. I mean, I grew up in a very, I went to a very suburban Type high school, and uh, there was no identity about it whatsoever. But but this place is beautiful. So anyway, honored to play here. Thank you, Franklin, for inviting us to play. We're we're going to do uh, uh, one more uh, short medley of tunes, and uh, then invite Cameron up here to do some uh, numbers. And uh, the first one here is a West Virginia tune written by Bernie Carpenter. It's called 
uh, Elder Blues, and it was composed when um, the family farm of generations was uh, flooded over for the, for the Tennessee Valley Authority. And uh, so the farm was lost, and so it was on the Elk River, so it's called the Elk River Blues. And, um, and then the, 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 the last tune is a tune I wrote called Cape Solstice. And first tune is 
called Billy in the Low Ground.
tune being Lady of the Lake, which is a New England contra dance song. Speedy Wyman, some of you may have heard of, a well-known fiddler from Vermont. And the dance seems to, you know, these things skip a generation, I think. And uh, so Dan is, Dan has got it. He's always very entertaining. He, and he's here with Rebecca Padula. And they're also going to be accompanied by the Green Mountain Club, Dan and Dan. So, take it away again. Angel and the Baker. Thank you. 
that's a lot of fun. All right, uh, I'm going to give you a little number here. Uh, this one is from... This one comes from Riley Puckett and the Down South Boys. This one is called, I Only Want a Buddy, Not a Sweetheart. Safe Harbor Rag. <laughs> Thank you. 
good old costume change. <laughs> I forgot to mention that the name of their band is Lead Foot Louise. Really where that came from? That's what they call themselves. Here they are. Okay, so uh, I, I came up with a with my own little composition. This one is called uh, Brandon Gap. Guy and 
probably most of the people in attendance or somewhere around the world know him. It's Pete Sutherland. I'm going to play a tune called Sunday River Waltz. Dancers, more kind of the, I think it's the river dance, kind of Irish dancing, which is the ones where they, you know, well, you'll see them. And they are students. It's, it's Susanna and Sadie and Anna. They didn't give me their last names for, you know, some sort of witness protection thing. <laughs> but they are, they are students of the Heather Morris School of Celtic Dance, and I'm sure they work hard at this. They're going to start things off, I believe, with a little of the Irish dancing, and then Bill Cameron is going to take it away and wind up the show, and at the very end, maybe we'll get together and play a few tunes, everybody together, and that'll be it. Exciting to you know say that people are coming out to play and then nothing mm. happens. Anyway, here they are.
Cindy and Anna. Heather Moore School, and we want to thank them. I'm trying to remember a time when I was so light on my feet, I haven't come up with the answers. Anyway, so now Bill is going to take it away. Bill Cameron. That was all my tunes, thank you. <laughs> that was going to go this easy. Yeah, Frank asked me, he said, hey, do you know any Irish tunes? No. <laughs> but I did know Irish Washington when I was a little kid, so it was too broad that. Um, I'm going to try to bring some new ones. Thank you all for letting me come back. Thank you, Frank, for uh, inviting me again. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to remember what tunes I played last year in case some of you were here last year. I didn't want to do those again because I like those tunes. It matter. And it doesn't matter, exactly. So, anyways, I'm going to try uh, this one's called the Bolio Reel. Station Master, Station Master Waltz. <laughs> 